people are going to be shocked when they go and see it. I think so, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, a nice little movie about a girl Being falling teen. in love with people. And then they're like, whoa, just naked, having sex with a 35-year-old man a lot. <laughs> it's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim Taylor Bennett, and welcome to Vice Talks Film. Today I'm joined by actress Belle Powley, and we're going to be talking about her Sundance award winning film, The Diary of a Teenage Girl. I got a girl, she's sweet as can be. All the other boys want You have a kind of power, you know, you just you don't know it yet. Hey. Is alive. Ah! This makes me officially an adult. Well, thanks for joining me today. Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm really good, thank you. <laughs> good. Excited. <laughs> good. When you were flipping through the script, what struck you immediately? I just felt like it was the most honest portrayal of a teenage girl that I'd ever read. And that goes for scripts that I've read, books that I've read, you know, kind of any sort of media, like articles that I've read. Um, I was literally flipping through it, being like, oh, I felt like that, I felt like that, I'll feel that's me, that's me, that's me. Like the essence of how it really like feels to be a teenage girl, like mm -hmm. in your heart and in your brain, like that portrayal was just so true and so honest. Like when you're a teenager, everything is really on the surface and there's like this huge push, push and pull in your mind and everything feels really extreme. Mm -hmm. you know, everything feels like a life or death situation. Totally. And as I was reading the script, I was like, whoa, like all these like memories were flooding back yeah. of like my teenagehood. And there were like certain situations um, you know, in the in the story that I could really relate to as well. So I made like an audition tape and I wanted to, be, I've never had that with a script before. Like I have to find a way to be in this movie. I was like, I've got to find a way to make this happen. Yeah. And um, so I added like this weird extra bit on the end of my audition tape where I like, spoke to the camera and was like, hi, Marielle. Um, I'm Isabel Pauli, um, and these are all the reasons I relate to this script. Like yeah. I really need to have a conversation with you about it because I just felt like my passion for it was gonna be greater than anyone else's, <laughs> which sounds quite like overconfident of me, but I just knew that I needed to speak to her about it. And then, yeah, she listened. She didn't think I was a crazy person. Right, and this uh, script was based off a graphic novel. Did you reach out to the author of that to get any kind of sense of that, of your character, of Minnie's character? No, or? I didn't. I think that, you know, as an actor, when you're, when you're recreating, um, something from like another piece of art, it's like a different version, you know, of a film or of a novel or whatever. You have to like really allow yourself to come at it um, organically. So I definitely read read the novel. It was a decision whether to even read it. Like I don't think Alex even even read it. Like because sometimes it can be a hindrance yeah. rather than a help. Um, but I read it like three months before we started shooting, so that. I could kind of absorb all of the information and then take the bits from it that I wanted to weave into my version of Minnie and kind of leave the rest behind. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've met Phoebe since. I mean, I met her like halfway through filming and she's an amazing woman. And I just feel really thankful that like, she let Mari make a movie of the novel because it's such an incredible story. Right, and I heard that she had been approached previously to get the rights for this, but had kind of held on to them and, and that Mari really managed yeah, to Yeah, Mari like her. apparently like hounded her, was, like sending <laughs> cookies to her agent's office and like calling and screaming down the phone like, Give me that right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she actually said that the, the graphic novel is grittier and kind of darker than oh, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, the graphic novel is like this thick and it's a hybrid between like graphics and like normal um, prose, but it's, yeah, it's really, really, really dark. Yeah. It goes a lot further than the movie. Nobody loves me. Maybe I should kill myself. Nah, alienation is good for your art. So you're 23 now, and you had yeah. to get into the head of a 15-year-old, and uh, you know the the physicality of it. I yeah. think you really embodied well. Yeah. You when know, my best friend watched it the other day. She was like, she <laughs> leaned over to me and was like, "Why are you walking like that?" <laughs> <laughs> and then Mari, also, or the Mari, the director, also said in an interview the other day that I walked like a deer that was just learning to walk. Very much so. <laughs> but no, and I started to realize it's so true. I think I was trying to. Like, I think like when you're a teenager, your body is changing mm -hmm. and 
I don't know, I feel like your like limbs don't fit onto your body or like your tits don't match your ass or like, it's like everything's like really like out of proportion. Yeah. And also having had sex for the first time, you start to view your body like objectively yeah. in a different way. Like you put on a pair of pants and you'll be like, oh, like you'll like notice the shape of your butt and like shit like that. So I think, yeah, I was just trying to like embody that new way of like holding yourself but it not quite working yeah <laughs> well there was an interesting like awkwardness to it but then also this kind of swagger yeah exactly yeah. this like kind of confidence that you know you almost haven't got all the yeah. insecurities of you know knowledge of being yeah. older it's like trying on being sexualized and being an adult yeah. but like not quite knowing how to wear it yeah exactly i think that one of the scenes that really struck me was when you were like howling in the bathtub uh, just crying yeah. and I just I remember being 14 and like f f basically fancying this boy and then he ended up going out with my best friend and I remember lying in the bathtub just like crying my eyes out and I was like that's so true yeah and also like when you're a teenager like it feels good it feels good to be like <gasps> ah! yeah. like you feel like you need that like outlet like you can't really keep a lid on it yeah. basically I think that's also the difference is like as I was like you know trying to create the character for Minnie. Like I did like a lot of background work and a lot of it was just like thinking back to how I was as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Like it was exhausting. I was like, oh my God, like how did I survive those years <laughs> when I was this crazy? Like you think in just such an irrational nuts way. Yeah. And I think it's so specific to being a teenager. Did you keep any diaries when you were younger? I did. I kept one until I was like 15 mm -hmm. and then just kind of stopped. And I don't really know why. Probably something to do with like the technological revolution and like how I just put everything on Facebook or something awful like that. <laughs> there are a lot of scenes in this movie that are unflinching and incredibly intimate and you know not just because you're naked just because of the kind of emotions that move between you and the character Monroe. I mean can you tell me about one scene that you found particularly difficult or one that you were especially proud of? I like the whole thing was difficult. Yeah. The whole movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like there was no one scene that was more difficult than others. I mean, like there were obviously ones that were like emotionally draining because I was crying or there were ones which were a bit scary because I was like standing there naked in front of a bunch of people I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But it was, the whole thing was such a challenge. Like, as I say, I treated it like a play and, and it, like, you know, sometimes when you do filming, like, you'll have, like, two days off or you'll have a scene where you can kind of, like, not really concentrate and you kind of get away with, like, not knowing your lines. Whereas with this, it was, like, if I didn't, like, really investigate, like, every corner of, like, Minnie's being and if I really didn't portray that all truthfully, then I feel like Minnie would just crumble. Like, everything, I had to be there and be on 24-7. So the whole thing was a, was a challenge. And the first scene that you guys shot, the first day of shooting, was actually you and Alexander in this bar. Yeah. It's the... Which is like the beginning of the relationship. Right, the finger-sucking scene. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love that it. it's called the finger-sucking scene. <laughs> I just christened it that. Yeah. Um, I mean, talk to me about that experience. I guess you guys had already developed a certain amount of intimacy, but it's, yeah. you know... I mean, it was that scene was really, really important. And when we had our two weeks of rehearsal, I mean, we were never, like, physically rehearsing or blocking anything out. It was more what we call table work, which is where we kind of just sit around a table and work. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really obvious. Um, and we kind of mapped out Minnie and Monroe's, like, emotional journey. And as we were working out the beats of that scene which A, kind of sets precedence for the dynamic of their relationship and I think is really important because she's the one that puts his finger in her mouth and she's the one that says, I want you to fuck me. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of sets this precedence that she's not a victim and like it's not too predatory. Yeah. But also all of the beats and nuances of that scene, like the push and pull, kind of reflect all the beats and nuances of their relationship over the whole movie. Mm -hmm. So it was important to just get those exactly right. Yeah, and uh, actually the cinematographer apparently said, you know, that was the best first day of shooting that I've ever had. Yeah. Was there a sense of that for you? Well, there was definitely a nervousness. Yeah. Of like, well, we can't fuck this up. Like, because <laughs> if we do, then the kind of whole, the rest of the story and the rest of the movie is gonna fall apart. Like, yeah. if we don't convey what we wanna convey in this scene, then as I say, because it sets precedence for their relationship, the whole thing won't follow on. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was like a very nervous energy on set that day. 
Um, but yeah, it, it felt good. It felt like we achieved something at the end. So Kristen Wig plays your mom. What was it like working with her? What did you learn from interacting with her on set? Apart from that she's like the most hilarious woman in the world. <laughs> it was just amazing working with her in like a dramatic capacity because I know her as a comedian. Mm -hmm. And Alex as well, like I know him as a vampire. <laughs> so um, it was amazing right. working with him in this role too. I just felt like really honored that I was doing something, you know, it was so different for them. And I was like experiencing that with them. Um, I couldn't imagine anyone else playing Charlotte. I think that the mother-daughter relationship in the movie is as important in terms of Minnie's journey and her growth as the Minnie and Monroe relationship. I think that one of the big things that Minnie comes to know at the end is like, you don't, she doesn't need to emulate her mother in order to be like a successful woman or mm -hmm. she doesn't need to live up to her mother's ideals of what she wants her to be. It's kind of cutting the apron strings type moment. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna have that bod forever, man. You might be happier if you put it out there a little bit, you know? Wear some makeup, wear a skirt once in a while. Jesus. Get some attention. And what did you and Marielle discuss when you were kind of developing this character? Like, did she, because she adapted this mm. uh, to be an off-Broadway play and, and she played Minnie herself, so I'm sure she had lots of specific ideas about how she wanted yeah, well, actually, out. like, I always forget that she played Minnie herself, which I think is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very much like a director-actor relationship, and if she was ever thinking, like, oh, I didn't do it like that, she never <laughs> said it to me. <laughs> yeah. um, so she really, like, allowed me to have free reign in terms of, like, my interpretation of the character, and she was really collaborative. So in those rehearsal, those, like, weeks of rehearsal, you know, if something felt not right to say or, like, a movement felt awkward or something... Um, and I raised it, or Alex raised it, about Monroe, she would always be up for discussing it, and she'd go away and rewrite stuff, and we'd, like, retry stuff. So it was, like, a really collaborative process. And I think it was just also really helpful that me and Mari kind of both were like Minnie when we were teenagers, which is, like, one of the reasons why we connected so much in the first place. And we both kind of saw Minnie as this, like, separate entity from ourselves that we really wanted to, like, honour. You know, so we'd always kind of check back in with Minnie yeah. and also with like our own teenage selves like, so we could always relate to those three things. There's been a lot of talk uh, of, you know, there's never been a film that really represents females like teenage sexuality um, well. And I started to think about, you know, what films did I identify with when I was like younger and it was like mermaids and you know, maybe blue is the warmest color is a good example of one mm. that worked well. I mean... But that was only last year. That was only <laughs> last year, yeah. So do you You're like, when I was young. When I was like young. 12 months ago. <laughs> I mean, were there really no... Do you, are there no... Or like My So-Called Life, that was a TV yeah. series that I thought really did teenage... They're, like the awkward teenageness of girls. There really, for me, weren't any. Really? I'm like... My, my generation was kind of like the mean girls generation. And then kind of when... Which obviously is an amazing film, yeah. but it's like a comedy and like the characters are still quite 2D. And mm -hmm. it also, the thing that annoys me about Mean Girls is like it kind of makes fun of like masturbation and female sexuality rather than like attacking it head on. Yeah. Um, and then kind of Juno came out and I was like really excited about that, but then I felt like no one actually speaks like that. So I feel like there are all these movies when I was growing up where they were kind of trying to like address the situation, but would only address like one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. and women would be put in these kind of like 2D like boxes. So it's like, well, you can either be the virgin waiting for your Prince Charming, or you can be this kind of like high school slut, or you can be this kind of asexual geeky, like quippy girl. Yeah. And I think as teenagers, you're an amalgamation of like everything. Like it's when you're, there are so many different versions of you because you're growing and you're changing. So just one version, it's like definitely not correct. And I also felt like all the teenagers in the movies I was watching would just kind of breeze through life and yeah. and like always have like a really funny answer for everything and like nothing really fazed them. And that's like pretty much the opposite of what it's like to be a teenager. Like when you're a teenager, like everything means so much mm -hmm. and your emotions are like so on the surface and you like oscillate between so many different emotions at one time. and you know, someone touches your tit and you think you're in love with them, or someone breaks up with you and you feel like you're going to die. Yeah. You're so much more earnest than we're portrayed in movies. Yeah, absolutely. Were you upset that um, it was given such a high rating? Yeah. Yeah. 
completely upset. I was like really surprised as well because when we were shooting, we were discussing it. I was like, oh, don't worry. England's so liberal, it will definitely get a 15. <laughs> and then this happened, I was like, oh shit. So it's got an NC, what has it got, an NC and seven? Yeah, it's an actually higher than that. It's an 18. Okay. In England, which is like, you can't go and see if you're under 18, there's no way. But it's so ridiculous because this is actually what's happening to teenage mm -hmm. girls. Yeah, I feel like it just goes to show everything that we're trying to say with the movie is like, society is scared of teenage girls' sexuality. And it's, a bit of a vicious cycle. It's like, we're scared of it, so we won't talk about it, and we won't talk about it, because we're scared of it. And like, we need movies like this to help that problem. Mm -hmm. And it also, it's also annoying, because it's like, if you don't have movies like this, like, you feel so alone as a teenage girl, you know, when you have like these sexual thoughts, because you're constantly questioning, like, am I weird? Am I a freak? Because no one's discussing it. It's yeah. such a taboo subject for some reason. Everyone so happily makes movies about, you know, boys using their virginity and like boys wanting to go and get laid with those girls before they get married or boys having sex with an apple pie. And everyone's like, <laughs> ha ha, like, that's hilarious. And so boys like kind of breeze through their teenagehood, like thinking like, you know, all of their sexual thoughts aren't weird or aren't that strange. Mm. Whereas if you're a girl, you've like, think about masturbation or something, you're like, oh, is that really strange? Yeah, no, yeah. totally. It's just like, it's it's hidden. It's off the table. Right, so your hope, your hope is that this will, when it eventually gets to teenagers, which it will, um, that they yeah. feel kind of less alone? Definitely. I mean, like never in a movie, in a novel, or even in life, do we hear like teenage girls be like, I'm horny, I wanna fuck. Like, yeah. it's just not something that happens. Um, I think, and also, like, it's breaking this, like, virginity myth as well. I think we're taught as girls that, like, your virginity is something that sacred. you... It's sacred and you guard it with your life because boys are going to try and take it from you. Like, they're going to take, they're going to steal it from you. Yeah. And it's actually, it's, it's yours to, like, yeah, guard it if you want to guard it, but it's, it's yours to choose when you want to, like, lose it yourself. Mm -hmm. It's, like, the other way around. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping that... I think Diary kind of breaks breaks that myth as well, so I hope that teenagers can see it. You know, people always talk about, what's the takeaway for this film? I don't, it's not like a morality tale, like, I don't think there's, like, a lesson. Yeah. And I think that's the whole point. Um, we kind of just wanted to present this story without any judgment and kind of just allow everyone to take from it what they wanted. Like, if I were a teenage girl, I guess what I would take away from it, you need to value yourself. Um, and your 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 self worth is nothing to do with love from a man or from anyone else, and you really need to kind of love yourself and the skin you're in um, before you can go about kind of being in love with anyone else. Yeah. Um, also, I think it's just like when you're a teenager, like I was saying before, like everything feels so extreme, and I think it's important for young people to know that if you make mistakes or you make bad decisions or you sleep with the wrong person, like, the world isn't going to implode. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll be fine. Yeah. There might be repercussions. You might not even learn from them. You might not even be punished for them. Like, you might be, but you will move on and you will grow and you'll live. Yeah. <laughs> you'll get on with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks so much, Val. It's Thank been a pleasure. You. Thank you so much. <laughs>